everybody it's Christine from Christine Passion Plans and it's been a bit since I've been here to see you but um, I wanted to get on today and I wanted to share something different today I wanted to talk with you about my top five planner truths Christine's top five planner truths so if you're interested in that stay tuned <music> Okay, welcome back. Thank you for being here today. If you're wondering what my background is, I'm actually a sand tray therapist. And what you see in the background are miniatures that we use in sand tray therapy. I know that's a whole different discussion if you've never heard of that before. But if you're wondering what I got going on back here, this is the office I'm currently working in right now. So I had a break in my day and I wanted to go ahead and share my top five planner truths with you. So let's get started. But first, if you haven't been to my channel before, I'm so glad you're here. And if you don't know who I am, um, I, as I said before, I'm Christine. And pa the Passion Planner is my first love in planning. So I absolutely love using the Passion Planner. I've been using the Passion Planner since 2017. And I also love the Happy Planner. And this season especially, I have kind of appreciated the Happy Planner a little bit more. And in future videos, I'll talk about both planners and how I'm using them both in my life. So that's who I am as a planner. But let's get to those top five planner truths. Here we go. Number one, my top five planner truths. I had to write them down so I didn't forget them all. So planning is evolving. So let's have some real planner talk here about all this. Like, I think as planners, we get really frustrated really easily about trying to find planner peace. Does planner peace exist? <laughs> I know that this can be a controversial subject amongst ourselves in the planner community, but here's something that I have learned about myself, especially within the last two years of being really active in the planning community and really engaging in planning as a hobby and also as a necessity. What I have discovered is that as my life changes, as seasons change in my life, which most of the time, all of that is completely unexpected and not planned for, I can make the best of plans for how I want life to be, and things will change. Um, things will constantly go a different direction or change into something I didn't see coming. And honestly, I've had a lot of that in my life within the last year, if not longer. And I'm ready to kind of get into a season of life that is a lot more settled than I've had in quite a while. And the thing is, when seasons change in our life, we have to adjust to it. We have to evolve with it, or it can cause a lot of anxiety. It can cause a lot of depression. Um, Y'all know I'm a therapist, so I'm really big on mental health wellness. And instead of focusing on planning as like, I'm not good at it, I'm a failure at it, um, I buy planners and I don't use them, or I keep changing planners, which by the way, I call planner ADHD. I have that too. Um, it's really easy to judge ourselves for not planning the right way. So along with this concept of planning is evolving is an important thing to remember is that there are no rules, y'all. There are no rules in how we do this planning thing. So let's release ourselves of the stress that we put on ourselves about whatever rules we think should be there. Like, it's okay if I don't finish a 12-month planner and change into a different planner. Or it's okay if I don't plan for a month and I have a whole month in my planner that hasn't been written in. Like, life happens. Let's remember, the planner is there to serve you, right? You are not the one serving the planner. <laughs> so let's get rid of planner guilt because that doesn't do anybody any good. And let's think about this in terms of life. Life happens. Life gets very, very busy. And sometimes we just don't have the time that we want to have to put into planning, especially if you're into decorative planning or using planning as a hobby. There are seasons in our lives where we just don't have time for our hobbies. And if that's your situation, it's okay. Do what you need to do for you. Don't let this thing that's supposed to be fun for you become a source of stress for you. 
let it evolve with who you are. And I've heard so many people say, like, it took me years to really adapt to what my true planning style really is. And I thought that was crazy. I was like, years, that's a long time. And I have found it to be true, to be honest with you all. I would say that I'm finally entering a period in my life with planning where I feel like I'm finally setting in, settling in into a planning system that is actually going to work more long term for me. I've said this in the past, but I feel it more deeply this time, y'all. I feel more deep about this. Like, it's actually going to be the system I'll probably stick with long term that I am putting together for 2022 and then I'm kind of dappling in this fall. I'll do another video on all my plan, plan, current planner light ups. But the plan that I had a couple months ago of what I wanted to do for my planner system has completely changed because once again, within the last two months, I have had significant life changes that I could have never predicted were going to happen in my life. And the planning system that I had going on just wasn't working for what is going on in my life. And I will say as planner is planning, not planner, planning evolves in your life, as seasons change in your life, you have to figure out what time and energy you have to put into planning so that you enjoy it. So what I have been finding, because life has been a little bit crazy and I'm trying to get to a place where it's a little more stable, is I don't have as much time as I did say when we were stay at home COVID situation as I did then to redesign a layout. So for example, if I'm looking at the hourly layout of the Passion Planner and I wanna use it for something other than what it's already designed for, which I have been using as a faith planner where I cover up all the timelines and I put washi tape over different sections and I make those sections into what I want them to be. I mean, I love that. I think it's a great idea to do that. But what I'm finding is I don't have the time to put in to actually redesigning the planner for how it's meant to be used anymore. At least not this season, I don't. I might enter another season where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back to this and I can start redesigning it again how I want to use it. But right now, whatever planners I get, I need the design to work with my life so I can just pick it up and start writing in it. So I hope that makes sense. Like we just roll with what's happening in life. And we can scroll on Instagram and on Facebook groups and see all these beautiful planners and all the amazing things that you all are doing out there to planners, but don't compare yourself. And I know we've heard this many times, comparison is the thief of joy, but I think so many of us forget that, you know, be true to yourself, embrace yourself for where you are in life. And when it comes to planning, use it to bring life to yourself, not the other way around. Not, it's not meant to bring stress to yourself. Let planning be an evolving thing for you as your life changes and as seasons change in your life. And love yourself for it. It's okay. Nobody's a perfect planner. I promise you, nobody is a perfect planner. And I say these things to you coming from a place of, I have been there. I have judged myself. I have told myself like, why do I have so many planners? I shouldn't have bought these planners because I don't use them all, the whole thing and whatever. And that just doesn't, that takes the fun out of the hobby when I'm judging myself so harshly all the time about that. So I just encourage you, see planning as an evolving system in your life that changes as you change. And you know what? You might get into a, system, a season of your life again where you might go back to an old system that worked before. And that's okay too. It's your planner. It's your life, it's your time, it's your energy. You make it personal and work for you, not how it works for somebody else. So that is my first thing. Planner, planning is constantly evolving, okay? So as I'm looking at my notes, number two, number two, planning is for organization, productivity, and keeping things organized. So let's talk about that for a second. It, this is different for different people. Some people buy their planners 100% for a hobby, which I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes, and 100% for decorating and art and all that kind of thing. And that's amazing. I'm completely supportive of that. For me personally, planning is a necessity for organization. It always has been. Um, I've always used a planner since I was in school. And when I started my first career, I was a school counselor, which meant I worked in schools and everything I did 
was measured by the hour. So I had to block off hourly time blocks that represented what tasks I had to do throughout the day. And I needed an hourly layout to do that. And I would normally just go to like Staples or Office Max to buy those like day timer planners or whatever they had there to use those planners um, to help me through a school year. And that's what I've done, what I did for a very long time until I discovered Passion Planner and their hourly layout was so perfect for what I was using it for at that time. And now as a therapist, I need the hourly layout for obvious reasons because I schedule clients and I need that hourly layout to plan in that way. So I'm, it's necessary for me to have planning and planners as part of my daily life. If I don't write down things, if I don't make lists for things, if I don't process things through journaling, like my brain gets so full and it causes me so much stress and anxiety, it's too much. So the planning and the journaling is there to help me de-stress and it's helped me, it helps me get my life organized and it takes away anxiety. And it's there for that function and that purpose. So all that to say, there are days that I don't use stickers. And there are days I don't color match or color code everything. You know, sometimes it's just pen and paper. And that's okay. I just want to affirm those of you pen and paper folks that are like, I don't really want to do all the stickers or I can't afford all the stickers. Or I don't really have time for all the artsy stuff. That's okay because planners are there to help you be organized and to have a functional purpose in your life, to help you increase productivity, to help you um, remember to do things that you wouldn't otherwise um, remember to do. I mean, psychology shows when you write things down, you remember it better. So planning has a purpose. Planning is for organization. It's a necessity. It's for productivity. It's functional. That's my number two planner truth. Okay, are you ready for number three? Number three, in line with planning is functional, planning is a necessity, planning can also be extremely messy, you all. Planning can be messy, especially if you're just writing down plans, organizing lists, anything related to being productive. You've got to get it out and you've got to write it down in order for it to become organized in your life. And that is a functional, productive way to use your planner, okay? Now, again, this may not work for those of you that are real de decorative planners and the purpose of buying your planner is to utilize your um, outlet to do art and all that, that's cool. But if you are using your planner to keep your life organized or for work or anything like that, it can be super messy and that's okay. That's totally okay. And I've had to embrace this for myself. Again, I look at Instagram and think, wow, y'all are amazing with your planners out there. I don't have time to do that kind of work with my planners. I just wish I had the time to do all that. And there has been seasons of my life where I do have time to be real decorative. But at this season of my life, it's not quite, I don't have as much time as I would then. So I just use my planner however best serves me. Okay. And you know what? It's messy. It's messy. Sometimes embrace the mess. Okay. Embrace the mess when you need to. So remember the planner is there to serve you. All right. On to number four. Number four is planning is a record for me. It's a document record that shows what has happened in my life. Kind of like a journal. Journaling is definitely that for me. So I have kept journals since I was 11 years old. I have journals from that long ago in my life. And it's kind of fun sometimes to go back and look at the things I wrote back then, especially some of my early adult journals to show where I've grown in my life. And planners are the same way for me. And honestly, I wish I hadn't thrown away all the planners that I had thrown away. Um, when I really first started using planners for work, um, I would have loved to have seen like some of the stuff I was doing back then and how I've grown and how my planning style has changed over time. But I, since 2017, I've kept all my planners. And when I look back, it tells me so much about my life. It is a record of my life. And when I keep it in these beautiful planners and shelf them and whatever, I consider it as like this almost this historical document of who I am and what my life has been like. And I think that's really cool. So when I think about like what a planner is to me and what planning is to me, 
part of it is I'm recording my life. This is my life history. And I don't know, somebody might be interested in seeing that someday, you know? And I just like keeping that and um, keeping it special. So when I think of planning, it's very personal to me. Uh, I have been very much embracing the fact that what you all do with your planners is amazing and beautiful. And I'm always going to compliment you all on how amazing your work is in your planners. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I'm not going to compare myself to you because my planning style is completely different and I have different purposes for my planning. So planning is a historical document of my life and it is for you too. All right. We're getting close to number five. Yeah, number five. It looks like I have six points here, but I'll talk about the last point here in a few minutes. But number five, this is a big one, okay? So planning is also a hobby, and I mentioned this a few minutes ago. And so I want to talk about this because I have been seeing a lot in the planner community, especially <coughs> this fall season around the Happy Planner release, especially, um, just, I don't know, some negativity, I could say, some negative comments about <coughs> people are buying a lot of planners, or people are spending a lot of money on this, and yeah, it's a hobby. If you think about different hobbies that people have in their life, you can have many different hobbies. <coughs> Excuse me, I kind of cough. Um, most hobbies cost money. Am I right? Yeah, they cost money. I'm, a long time ago, I was into playing music, and it cost money to upkeep my instrument, um, take care of it, um, buying music, things like that. <coughs> um, it costs money. I used to be a collector of vintage toys. That definitely costs money. I still collect very rarely, unless I see something that I, you know, is rare or whatever. But, like, I went through a few years of my life where that was my big hobby. And, yeah, it was expensive. I can't really think of a hobby that isn't too expensive. You know, even art. Like, you still have to buy the materials to engage in anything related to art. So, and as scrapbooking... I mean, scrapbooking, I mean, you can, it doesn't have to be incredibly expensive, but we tend to make it expensive because how fun of it is it to go to, a, how fun is it to go to a craft store and buy all the things, you know what I mean? So let's think about this for a minute. While planning is very functional and has a purpose in our lives, for many of us, it is a hobby. Now, there are some people where planning is not a hobby, and this is what I want to delineate. This is what I want to, like, kind of separate, like... For people that consider planning to be their hobby, we are going to spend money on this. And it might seem crazy. It might seem like it's a lot. It might seem to be too much. But this is our hobby. And you don't know the situation. You don't know. Like for me personally, I have to put money aside to save for big releases when I know I'm going to want all the things. So it's not like I'm just like spending money out of nowhere. And if I were, that's really nobody's business, to be honest. Um, but I think some people do save money because this is their hobby and they save money for this purpose because it brings them joy. That's the whole purpose of having a hobby is to bring you joy and give you an outlet from all the other hard things in life. Y'all, we need this outlet. <laughs> There's too many difficult things in life, right? Let's have fun with the things that bring us joy, bring us light, and enjoy that, you know? Instead of looking at other people's planners or looking at other people's planners, planner halls and making comments like, wow, that was a lot, or wow, you know, you must have money to spend or whatever. Like, instead of making those comments, be happy for one another, you know? You may never buy that many planners that some people buy. You may never buy that many stickers because maybe you are simply a functional planner and that's what you use your planner for. You use it for work to help you plan. You use it maybe for home to help you keep track of appointments and whatnot. And that's all you use the planner for. And that's okay. You are a functional planner and we love you for that. But please, please also be respectful of those of us that like it as a hobby. And I see the difference being that you spend more time doing the decorating or the scrapbooking in the planner as much time as we do the actual planning, if that makes sense. It you spend more time in your planner 
doing that kind of crafty work than just writing down plans. That's what I see as the difference between the hobby and being a functional planner. I am both. I use my planners for very functional purposes, but it's also a hobby for me. Also for planning, I realize I'm going to use a planner more if it's pretty. I mean, and that's a girly girl thing to say for me, but yeah, and that's okay for me. It makes me enjoy it more, and because it's pretty and I keep looking at it, then I'm way more likely to use it to help organize my life, if that makes sense, to actually take it seriously in my life and to let it impact my life in a positive way. So being in this planner community, especially if you are a newbie to this planner community, welcome. We are so glad to have you here. And as my part in the planner community, I just want to bring you all love and light. Like if you want to buy $500 worth of stuff, I'm going to be like, that's amazing. I'm really glad that you are able to do that for yourself. And I hope you enjoy all of your purchases. And I can't wait to see what you do with them, you know? I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, well, that's a lot of money spent on planners and stickers because I've seen those comments in the planner community and I'm just like, let's just be nice to one another. Let's just be respectful to one another. It's our hobby. Let us enjoy it, right? So love and light to you all. I just pass that on to you. And for those of you that struggle with this a little bit, it's okay. It's okay if you struggle with it. I get it. I've been through seasons in my life. I'm actually going through a season in my life now where finances are pretty tight and um, it can be hard, you know, so that's okay. But when I look at other people's um, hobby and how they are enjoying it and sharing that on Facebook, they're just sharing their joy with us. And I want to engage in that too. And I want to affirm that for everybody. So planning is a hobby. And I just encourage you all to get all the joy out of it that you can. And when we look at one another's hobby, that we just affirm everybody and value everybody in this community. Okay? So I did have what I said was number six on here. It's not really a, a truth. I mean, it is a truth. But to wrap all this up, I see planning as very personal to each one of us. And I've heard other content creators say this very thing, but you guys, planning is personal to how we do it. It's all about who we are, what our style is, what our lifestyle is like, what we need planning for, whether we want it for both function and a hobby, or we just need it for just being productive, or if we just need a hobby to get into. I mean, for everybody, it's so different. So I just, again, I encourage us to be authentic in our planning styles, to love ourselves first and not be hard on ourselves for when we miss a week or not be hard on ourselves when we're like, oh, this planner isn't working for us. Let's change planners again. (laughs) You know what I mean? Embrace yourself for all it is and see it as information in your life about what is changing in my life that I need to make so much change as I go. And it could simply just be you like variety in your life and you need that. And that's okay. You know, so planning is personal. And I think what the beauty of that is, it makes this community so diverse. And that's what I love about the planning community. That's what I love about you all. So, yeah, that is my last planning truth. It's my addition to number five. So I'm glad that you guys were able to kind of spend a minute with me here this afternoon to talk about planner truths. Do you guys have any planner truths for yourself that you would like to share? If so, please do that down in the comments below and I'll be glad to read those and be in conversation with you all about that. If you want to know more about my planning style or you want to uh, see more videos related to passion planners specifically, I'm also gonna be doing some videos related to happy planner as well because they have come out with some really great planners that fit my lifestyle right now. So I'm going to be sharing some of that on YouTube as well. Um, if you're interested in any of this com- uh, any of this content, please hit the subscribe button below and hit that notification bell so that when I post a video, you will see it coming. And I do apologize that I haven't been posting as often as I've wanted to post, but um, I will be in the next coming weeks starting to post a few more videos and trying to get on a better schedule with that. Again, life has been busy and very unexpected twists and turns have been present in my life and I'm keeping up with it all. And to be honest with y'all, the YouTube channel tends to be the last on my list, but hopefully I'll be able to 
get caught up and I share some of this great material with you all. If there's anything also that you want to see on this channel, feel free to share that with me in the comments as well. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for being here today. Happy planning. Bye-bye.